We have identifiers for values we can use repeatedly. If you think of constants as nouns, we'll need some verbs to do actions. Swift has actions we can use repeatedly. We call these functions. Here's a simple example. Add this to your code just below the thing to declaration. So I'm going to put another let in here, and then we're going to use a new identifier. We'll call it my max. And we're going to put this in a, in a string. So I'm going to make this string interpolation like we've done before. And inside there, I'm going to use the function max. And you can see that it shows up in our autocomplete. So I'm just going to press return for that. And it's got two things that it needs to put in here. And I'm going to put in thing here. And I'll hit tab and hit uh, think to here. This is a function. A function is a set of code stored somewhere that does something you want done. In this case, the max function finds which number of two numbers is bigger. Functions require values to work correctly. You'll find two ways function obtain values. Max has in parentheses thing and thing too. We call stuff in the parentheses parameters. We'll make the result on the bottom of our output. So add this to our code. Text, my max. Over on our preview, we've now got the number 16. Text also has parentheses. Is text also a function? Before I answer that question, let's look at a string function first and show you an example of a second and more common way you might use a function in Swift. So I'm gonna change the code here and put in here appending and you'll see it right here it's the second one is appending so i'm just going to select that and it needs a string so i'm going to put two quotes and put in space is bigger and if you look to the preview swift added is bigger to 16. and that's because appending appends strings to other strings in some computer languages, you'll see both my max and is bigger as parameters, much like max up above on line 7. However, in object-oriented languages, you'll often find one parameter outside the parentheses, then a dot, and then the function with any parameter it needs. When a function takes this form, we call it a method. Methods are functions that require a special data type to run. Identifiers assigned to the data type are called objects. My max is an object of the string type, and appending is a method of string. Types in Swift are usually capitalized. So let's go back to text. Is that an object or a type? Well, it's capitalized, so it's probably a type, but it's a special type because what it is, it's defined by our user interface framework called Swift UI. Now, all types have a hidden method called init. The init method sets up a new object of that type. So our code actually reads for this line, text dot init, which essentially creates a situation where we have a text object with the results of my max and is bigger gets created and then used immediately. There's another object called spacer, which can make variable spacing, which I'm gonna stick right underneath this one here. So if I place it under the code, we have, I can move everything up to the top. So let's do this, spacer dot init. And I'm just gonna end the parentheses like that, okay? Now if we go back here and go into preview, you'll see what happens. All of our text is now moved up to the top because the whole bottom half is being used by spacer to push it up top ways, okay? Now, here's the thing about init and why we don't see it all over the place. It would be everywhere in Swift and Swift UI. So we hide it by specifying a type and the parameters of init. Since spacer has no parameters, it just gets empty parentheses like that, and that works fine. And the same thing here with text. If I go back up here to text, I can hide init like that. And we don't usually use it. There are cases where you have to, and there's certain places where you might. But for the most part, we're just going to do it like this, where we'll put the type and then its initialization parameters right afterwards. Apple created a framework called Swift UI to create user interfaces for your applications in Swift. We've been writing in Swift UI code. Text, image, vStack, and spacer are all Swift UI code. Swift UI has a special function it adds to objects called modifiers. 
you see some modifiers on the image object, such as image scale and foreground color. There's also a modifier called bold, which works on text. And I'm gonna add that one to our text. So let's go ahead back down here to is bigger. And I'm going to make that bold. And you can see that it turns bold. Modifiers change the properties of an object. There's also a font modifier. So I'm gonna go up to the top here where it says, hello pizza. And I'm gonna make that a large title. And so I can do it this way, dot font. And it's gonna ask for a value. And you just put a dot and there's a whole bunch of these already made for you. And I'm just gonna use large title. You can see it, the title gets really big. And let's make that bold while we're at it. And I'm gonna change the image two to use a title font. And that makes that bigger. So I can go down here to just below where it says accent color. So I have a new one here. And I'm actually gonna do this on a separate line. So I'm just gonna hit return. And I'll just put that with a dot to start this. And we'll put font dot. And we're gonna use title here. And that makes it bigger, okay? Um, while I'm at it, that number is actually wrong because we put this thing in here last time. So I'm gonna get rid of this and make that 11, which is its correct number. Now, the foreground color changes the color of text and SF symbols, so I can change that too. Now, right now I have it as accent color. I'm gonna delete that and delete the dot. And then I'll find out, I got a whole bunch of different colors I have here. And let's go here for indigo. And there we go, we get a nice indigo one. Maybe I want red instead. Okay, and so we get a whole bunch of those that we can put in there. And we can start to see that our, our app is starting to come together and we're starting to see a lot more formatting and things like that. With a few functions, methods, and modifiers, we've changed the look a lot. We'll make some more changes next time as we add some more objects and learn how to arrange the SwiftUI objects we have.